you will know that the Lord will come and he will save us and in the morning you will see his glory in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My dear friends, as we gather on this holy night to celebrate that moment when the Ancient of Days, when the second person of the Trinity leapt down from his heavenly place to become one of us and being laid in the manger at Bethlehem, we come before the Lord with profound thanksgiving to celebrate these sacred mysteries. And so to prepare ourselves, we call to mind our sins and we thank and praise him for the forgiveness which flows from his loving heart. We pray together. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who gladden us year by year as we wait in hope for our redemption, Grant that, just as we joyfully welcome your only begotten Son as our Redeemer, we may also merit to face him confidently when he comes again as our Judge, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is a reading from the prophet Isaiah. About Zion I will not be silent. About Jerusalem I will not grow weary. Until her integrity shines out like the dawn and her salvation flames like a torch. The nations then will see your integrity, all the kings your glory. And you will be called a new name, one which the mouth of the Lord will confer. You are to be a crown of splendor in the hand of the Lord, a princely diadem in the hand of your God. No longer are you to be named forsaken, nor your land abandoned, but you shall be called my delight, and your land the wicked. For the Lord takes delight in you, and your land will have its wedding. Like a young man marrying a virgin, so will the one who built you wed you. And as the bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so will your God Rejoice in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant. I will establish your dynasty forever and set up your throne through all ages. I will, I will sing, sing forever of your love, O Lord. Lord. Happy the people who acclaim such a king, who walk, O Lord, in the light of your face, who find their joy every day in your name, who make your justice the source of their bliss. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. He will say 
to me, you are my father, my God, the rock who saves me. I will keep my love for him always, for him my covenant shall endure. I will, I will sing, sing forever of your love, O Lord. Lord. second reading, a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Paul reached Antioch in Pisidia, he stood up in the synagogue, held up a hand for silence, and began to speak. Men of Israel and fearers of God, listen! The God of our nation Israel chose our ancestors and made our people great when they were living as foreigners in Egypt. Then by divine power he led them out. Then he made David their king, of whom he approved in these words, I have selected David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who will carry out my whole purpose. To keep, him, to keep his promise, God has raised up for Israel one of David's descendants, Jesus as Saviour, whose coming was heralded by John when he proclaimed a baptism of repentance for the whole people of Israel. Before John ended his career, he said, I am not the one you imagine me to be. That one is coming after me and I am not fit to undo his sandal. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Tomorrow there will be an end to the sin of the world, and the Savior of the world will be our King. Hallelujah. which is printed on page 4. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. This is how Jesus Christ came to be born. His mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they came to live together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Her husband, Joseph, being a man of honour and wanting to spare her publicity, decided to divorce her informally. He had made up his mind to do this when an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because she has conceived what is in her by the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you must name him Jesus. Because he is the one who is to save his people from their sins. Now all this took place to fulfill the words spoken by the Lord through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son. And they will call him Emmanuel. A name which means God is with us. When Joseph woke up he did what the angel of the Lord had told him to do. He took his wife to his home. And though he had not had intercourse with her, she gave birth to a son, and he named him Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. The shepherds said one to another, Let us go now, even unto Bethlehem. They took a journey, and we do the same. Each and every Christmas night, we too go to Bethlehem with those unnamed shepherds. We tag along with them, as it were, as they come down the hill to the place that they've known all their lives and yet, a place where they've been promised something completely, astoundingly new. We're standing behind them, if you will, as they push the door, and they creep in, and we peer around their shapes as they pass through the doorway. And inside, there's a girl with that never-to-be-forgotten look of com 
combined exhaustion and exultation, which we know on the face of a newborn, of a brand new mother. There's the slightly older man, perhaps, trying perhaps to stop the worst of the drafts. They rather offend his professional instincts as a carpenter. And then, as we gaze round the sheds, we catch sight of a baby, a few hours old, to whom none of this fuss seems to matter. There are so many questions in those shepherds' minds. Can this really be the Messiah, the Saviour for whom the world has waited all these centuries? about whom Isaiah and the prophets poured out so many thousands of words which the shepherds had heard in the synagogues on those occasions when they were able to get away from work to get to the synagogue. This tiny baby, who has barely started to breathe, is this what the angels were singing about on the hillside a little while ago? Does the salvation of the world hang on the slender thread of an infant's life. Can this little thing in the manger really be the Son of God? Now fascinatingly, no words are recorded for us from the scene in the stable in Holy Scripture. The little holy thing in the manger sleeps. The Son of God, if you will, has become so poor that he cannot even speak. The Word, with a capital W, is wordless. So much turned on its head. But the shepherds are happier than they ever believed it possible to be. And so it was, and so it is. That on that holy night, something like 2,000 years ago, a girl, a carpenter, and some shepherds gazed on their Lord and, as it were, made their first communions. The angels provided the liturgy and the singing and the music. Simple souls who'd stolen a few moments from work formed the congregation at the very first Midnight Mass there ever was. And we, we in our way, we who in so many ways have so much more than those shepherds could ever have dreamt of, we, just like them, kneel on Christmas night to adore God in the self-same way. He loves us all with a love which we cannot hope even to comprehend. And until he welcomes us into his heavenly kingdom, there is nothing that he loves more than to see us here kneeling before him, as the shepherds knelt that night, waiting here and now to receive him in sacramental forms. For he comes to us in every mass, simple-hearted, loving-hearted, as he came to those shepherds. Perhaps the sceptical world may echo the shepherds' understandable questions. Can this thing that we encounter at the altar possibly be God? Can bread and wine be the miracle of which we hear so much? God with us, Emmanuel, soul and divinity, is the salvation of the world in any way linked with such simple things as bread and wine. Can this tiny thing which the priest gives out, distributed here in church, in another Bethlehem, another house of bread, really be Christ the Lord? And the answer, of course, is yes. The most resounding yes in the universe. For here is the great mystery of faith, as the poet put it, in a way that is both straightforward but always catching, that God was man in Palestine and lives today in bread and wine. 
This and every altar is our Bethlehem. This and every Mass is another Christmas, another Christ Mass, for every Mass is Christ's. The Blessed Sacrament is always the Lord Christ himself, the poor babe of Bethlehem, come to his poor people, however ragged and confused we may be like those ragged and confused shepherds. And of course it takes two to make a communion. Who are these two? They're God, touching your rough and ready tongue, and you taking him home this Christmas night in your body and your soul as truly as Our Lady bore him next to her heart on that first night in that stable, and also for the rest of eternity. All this, and so much more, caught up in that stable scene, then and there, here and now. Come, let us go now, even unto Bethlehem. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There is one slight difference as we say the creed tonight. You'll find the creed on page number eight of the booklet. And you'll notice that about a third of the way down the page, when we come to the great clause about the Incarnation, on this night and tomorrow, the Church asks us to kneel, to genuflect in honour of that sublime truth there at the heart of the Creed. The Word made flesh who dwelt among us. So we stand to proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became a man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Would you please be seated while we prepare the altar? Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord. 
accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all the Christian church. May the oblation of this day's feast be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray, that through this most holy exchange we may be found in the likeness of Christ in whom our nature is united to you, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognise in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly through your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all those who hold him to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred night, on which Blessed Mary the Immaculate Virgin brought forth the Saviour for this world, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Peter, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Through Christ our Lord, Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Through Christ our Lord, Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In 
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty. So that all of us who, through this participation of the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servant. who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, the place of refreshment, light, and peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world.
holds the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are they who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. The glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all flesh will sing the salvation of our God.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may draw new vigour from celebrating the nativity of your only begotten Son, by whose heavenly mystery we have we receive both food and drink, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. And just before I give the blessing. I would like to say from the bottom of my heart a huge, not just a huge happy Christmas, but an enormous thank you. Um, a thank you to everyone for everything. Um, there we are. Um, there's been a huge amount of um, work under very difficult circumstances. I can't imagine circumstances trickier. Um, that if we look around the church, um, you, you'll, you'll see. Um, and there's an awful lot that one can't see that's gone on to make Christmas Christmas. Um, and as um, somebody who's been here technically for four months, I'd just like to say how um, overwhelmed I've been by the friendship and the kindness and um, not least the, the generosity of so many people in the parish. Um, and I will be offering Mass for you all. Um, but I thank you from the bottom of my heart, personally, uh, corporately, as, a, as the McNabb clan. Um, and I'd like to take this point to have a, a Brucey wave, if I may. I know there are lots of people who would be at this Mass who can't be. Uh, my prayers are with you all. And um, wherever you are, gather round an iPad or gather round a computer. Um, you are still part of our praying parish. And, um, well... Last Christmas seems a very long time ago, things were very different, sitting over there helping Father Anthony out. Um, let's hope and pray that uh, next Christmas night will be um, rather different and that we won't be processing to a crib um, wearing a mask. Um, but the worship of God goes on, the love of God goes on, and the great divine mystery that is the mystery of Christmas night goes on. And may it be a blessing in your life and in your family's life and in the life of our country and our world the whole year long. God bless you all and a very happy and a very merry and a very blessed Christmas to you. The Lord be with you. And with you. Bow your heads for the blessing. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world, and by that glorious birth has illumined this most holy night, drive far from you the darkness of vice and illumine your hearts with the light of virtue. Amen. Amen. May God, who wills that the great joy of his Son's saving birth be announced to shepherds by the angel. Fill your minds with the gladness he gives, and make you heralds of his gospel. Amen. Amen. And may God, who by the incarnation brought together the earthly and heavenly realms, fill you with the, gift, with the gift of his peace and favour, and make you sharers with the church in heaven. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Come down upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.
let us pray. Almighty God and Father, a child is born for us and a son is given to us. Your eternal word let down from heaven in the silent watches of the night. And now your church is filled with wonder at the nearness of her God. Bless this our crib, a reminder of the lowly birth of our Saviour and King. Open our hearts to receive him so that our lives may be filled with his glory and peace. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Welcome, Lord Jesus, to this hallowed and gracious night that your birth has turned to bright morning. The angels' tidings ring in our ears. Our hearts sing out with joy for at last you are here. Dear child of grace, be gracious to us so that we may once more speak to God as Father. Prince of Peace, grant us your peace, so that we may live together on earth as brothers and sisters. To you, Lord Jesus, to the Father Almighty, and to the Spirit who binds us in love, be glory and praise this Christmas night and evermore. Amen. 